Now, we talked about community. We talked about leadership at the workplace. Now we're going to talk about relationships. Everybody don't got no good relationship. Not with the man and female. Everybody ain't got one. Everybody, and I'm gonna say ain't. I'm not gonna say everybody don't have. I'm gonna say everybody ain't got no good relationship. We got the great council center back there. Everybody ain't got no good relationship. We got the family center over here. Everybody don't have a good relationship. But this young lady, Toy Ann McCray, Hawthorne, I'm going to put that on there because her husband is here and I'm going to represent his last name. Is going to speak to us about male-female relationships. She is a community activist. She is a mentor and a motivational speaker. She is also a fitness instructor. And let me see. She has a fitness program here at the Dalton Park District, and I'm sure she would mind developing something for seniors if she could. Maybe she can do something for seniors as well. But I'm gonna let you come up here and talk about that because y'all do business. Bring her to the stage. I need y'all to give a warm welcome. Toy Ann McCray, come on, hot dog. Thank you for your vision. Um, thank you for providing a platform for these bad sisters. I'm sitting up here. We are bad, by the way, too. We're connected at this point. We get the jokes. Um, thank you so much for giving all of us this opportunity to share with one another and uplift in our own community. So when um, my husband reached out and said, hey, um, Kathy, follow us. She wants you to be part of her program. Are you available that day? I said, hmm, that's Kiki's birthday, that's my daughter. My baby made 30 years old today. And I, I, I didn't get pregnant this way, right? You got a testimony, right? You got a testimony. Um, so my baby made 30 today. And so I said, yeah, that's, that's Kiki's birthday. I, I'll make it happen to have an opportunity to speak um, on whatever you wanted me to speak on. At that time, I think it was community. So I just want to thank you for that. So she mentioned the picture of the, in the program, which is a beautiful program. She didn't ask me for a bio. She put on there what she knew about me and she, what she wanted y'all to know, and I appreciate that. Because a lot of times we can see a lot of words in a person and about nothing, right? We we'll read all this, we have to build up, and we're like, that's it, right? Then a lot of times we can see some little words, you're like, wow, that's, I didn't know all that power was in that punch. So I was letting the sister know, Kenya here, she spoke on, um, professional, being a profession, professional in corporate America. Um, I'm 24 years in at UPS. I was an hourly for only five months. God has blessed me to be in management and leadership the rest of those years. I was the first black female manager in the Ketch District, the largest hub facility that we had around the 2004. And I say that, Kathy, you, you mentioned in your intro about your gifts and your talents, and it's not a brag. It's a shame in a black community we have to give these preludes. Yes. Because we have been conditioned to think, oh, they're bragging. Oh, it's all about them. But it is what it is. God not going to give you those gifts. So with that being said, I'm only bringing that up because I connected with the sister because I have a lot of wounds and stripes on my back. But God chose me to be the one to be able to be in those positions to bring others up, just as she said, behind me to pass that baton. He knew I had the strength to be able to fight those fights and make a stand on my shoulders. Um, all of my black and brown sisters, older and younger than me, um, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that my black and brown sisters and our babies have what they need because nothing against the white woman, 
or the other nationalities, well, who can better speak for the black and brown woman than a black and brown woman, right? <laughs> who can better tell you about what happens in a black household besides somebody that grew up in one? You know, um, I tell people, I, I didn't have a mom, I had a mama. And that's my segue to my talk today, I had a mama who kept her foot in my neck and was able to give me an example of a strong black woman, wife, mother, leader in organizations. Um, so my mama is who laid the groundwork for me on how to have a healthy relationship to the best of her ability at the time she lived in. So now we're learning right about millennials, which I can't stand. <laughs> And they have their benefits, and I admire them, but the whole everything is a badge of honor, and, you know, I'm going to fight everything, and they're so emotional. That wasn't the generation I grew up in. It definitely wasn't the one my mama came up in. So I had the best of both worlds with having my mother watching her be a wife to my dad. And she wasn't the traditional um, baby boomer. She wasn't. She worked. She went to school. She's educated. She traveled. She was a leader in her community. She wasn't just sitting at home and waiting on my daddy to tell her what to do. She wasn't sitting at home, and I'm not knocking anyone for that I'm saying about my mom and what I was able to watch and why I am able to have a healthy relationship, because that's what the sister asked me to speak on, healthy relationships. But it starts from the beginning with my mother. I watch my mother, and again, my father had a lot of flaws, like many of us, but you wouldn't have known it, because she built that man up. She never spoke to those flaws, not until I was old enough and I was older and I married my first husband, this is my, this is my second husband. And I came home like, Mom, he won't let me do this, he won't let me write out the bills, he won't let me write the checks, because I watched my mother sit at that dinner on table and write that budget out and tape it to the wall and mark it off and make her budget and write the checks out. So I thought that's what I was supposed to do because that's what I saw my mother do. And she had to say, baby, it's time. Now I can tell you, I did that baby because your daddy couldn't. I didn't want to. If he can do it, let him to keep you in your feminine energy. Yeah. I'm gonna say that again. And so that was my sad way to lead to that because depending on what you saw when you were raised is pretty much how you probably operated in a relationship because that's what you thought was supposed to happen. Come on, come on, come yeah. on. Yeah. Mm. Now what happened in the household you grew up with wasn't a man. Mm. So then what was your example? But we were taught from a little girl, grow up, you're gonna be a princess, Right, your princess, get a house, get a husband with a good job, whatever that is, and go be somebody wife and let them take care of you. That's what we were told growing up. And so we run out there and we go find a man when the word of God said, when a man finded a wife. Not us, me and the hunters. But because of how some of us grew up in our homes, we reversed that thing, right? Because we had that pressure of, you 30, you ain't got no husband. You 25, you don't have no kids. You need to find yourself a husband. Well, that wasn't in my house. Gwen said, you're going to go to school. You're going to go to church. You're going to serve your community. You're going to learn how to be whole first. You're going to learn how to take care of you first. Because if you find the one he finds you, you ain't going to know what to do with him. Because you have to develop yourself. So to have a healthy relationship, it starts with healthy self. And so, so many times, two broken people come together and it's just a whole thing of broken mess. And finger pointing, you don't even know where it stemmed from. So she gave me 15 minutes as we was talking to talk about healthy relationships. I was like, yep, so I don't know how I'm gonna do that in 15 minutes. But I'm gonna just give a little bit of Gwenisms, my mother, right, and what I saw and how I was able to take those things and develop them and then learn from other people. As she said, the mistakes, things what not to do, some things that you saw maybe on TV, in the book, in somebody else's house, 
We, I couldn't go to nobody else's house for a long time as a little girl. My mother understood the development of the brain yes. and what you deposit into the yes. spirit. Yes. So now, baby, they come over here. Why well, I control the train going over there? I don't know their mama. I don't know what they do. They got a brother, a uncle, a son. No, uh huh. No, they a man with a penis, and you a girl with a big old booty. With all this thickness, you gonna stay right here. And I'm gonna put into you what I want you to have until you're ready to go. So when I was able, when I was older, people, I was probably sneaking because she didn't play that. She wanted to make sure she knew what I saw and what went into me. And so I saw my mother be a strong black woman and be a leader and be a warrior in the community, the church, and her family, the matriarch. But it was time for her to be Percy's wife, baby. She changed those hats. Right, right, right. You want them hats. You want them hats. You want them hats. Because she carried many of them, right? So I watched her in church. Jesus' sister is what I call because she's a woman of integrity and character, and I appreciate that. Uh uh, you're not gonna lie, you're not gonna steal, you're gonna be on time, you're gonna shut your mouth and mind your business and drink your water, okay? Mind your business. Watch her be a leader in church, that was one hand. And she was faithful to the word, she was faithful to the church, faithful to her roles. Then I watched her be in the community. Took all the children, packed them up in her car, took them to church, Bible study. I watched her be the leader in her family. Oh, baby, but when she went and turned the key and locked the door in 9352, that hat, as Percy's wife, you won't eat the big piece of chicken. You won't wake my husband up. He worked nights. Who's calling here? Don't you call me and disturb my husband. He's resting. Do what your father said. He run this house. He's going to work, he's paying these bills. Percy, you hungry? My mother was so cold, she never even had to ask him. She would look at him, and then I'm gonna this plate. I would watch her, she sit that plate down and he ate first. Cause I see this debate on social media, this madness. Oh, my kids gonna eat first, don't no man come before my kids. It's me and my kids over everything. So. When they can't go to work and pay a bill, when they get up and get grown going about their bill, they don't leave your lonely tail there. It's not how the word of God designed it. It's you and that man against the world, including the little nappy head kids you can work. That'll turn on you. You do it the right way. And show them an example of you and your husband and raise those kids up. Then they gonna understand family and teamwork and stick together, but it's you and your husband. But my mother, served my husband, my, my daddy. And not in a demeaning way, not in a he's bigger or better way, but in a, I got your back, I'm gonna build you up. I'm gonna make sure when you go out there with that, with the other people and they are attacking you. Remember now, my mom and dad is 80. So they know about picking cotton and going to Mississippi for the summers and being told you can't drink at this water fountain you too dark, and you can't have this job. So she understood about building up her black man, her husband, because he had to go out there and fight the world. So you're not gonna fight when you come home. Right. Right? Build him up. When he lacking, if you can't, if you don't have it, go figure it out. Right? So to bring that back home to 2021, when it comes to a healthy relationship, so I'm gonna just hit you with a couple of points. Whatever your role model was, wherever you learned, you might have to unlearn it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Even if it was your mom. Yeah. Amen. Because it may have been a bad recipe. She did the best that she could, the mom, grandmother, aunt. But it may have been a bad recipe. They may have come from that era where my parents and the mother didn't work. And the father did. And the mother didn't have a say so, and she didn't drive, and she had to wait on him. He had another family around the corner, but she couldn't go nowhere, right? That's another segment for another conference. Right, right. But, and that's okay. 
But you have the opportunity to learn to drive, get educated, go to school, have a say-so, have a career and still support your husband. That's what my mother did. She had a career. She was a traveler. She taught me to travel. My mother teach English as a second language in China, in India, in Australia, and still held her man down. My father could cook, could clean. My mother made sure it was a choice if he wanted to, and that balance. So I would say with a healthy relationship, depending on what you have learned over the years, you might have to relearn it. You might have to find your role model that's tangible. I ain't talking about Steve Harvey and his bad one, right? As one of my daughters say, that's not real. Because they got the money and resources. I'm talking about something that's tangible that you can start with some basic skills. The first one is yourself, self-love and self-respect. Trying to enter a relationship and you don't love yourself and don't respect yourself is going to be an issue because you're looking for that mate or that man to fulfill something that he can't. That only God and yourself can do. So your relationship, you use that as your last one. I said, oh, here she goes. So I'm going to rewind the first one. Where are you at with your relationship with God? Because man go feel you. Man, woman, job. So what's going to happen when you get church hurt, relationship hurt? Where's your faith to be able to have some grace with yourself and your mate? So I would say, allow yourself some grace for mistakes. Allow your mate grace. Communicate. We think we're good communicators. Communicate, right? Boundaries. What are boundaries? Hey, I don't like that. That offends me. Don't he 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 because I like him and that make me uncomfortable. Hey, don't say that. I don't like that. That bothered me. You stepped on my toe. Ouch. Boundaries. Right? When it comes to whatever in a relationship, create some boundaries for yourself. Have enough respect that you got your space. Hey, hey, you cross that. Don't, don't cross that line. Communicate. Be honest. If you know that you want children and you know you want to be married, you need to say that so you're not wasting time with somebody who don't. Don't try and change someone. The only person you can control is you. Is you. You can only control you. You can influence someone, right? They can admire you. They, I'm going to work on that. But the only person you can change is you. So one is in relationship trying to change somebody. He got a list of stuff that you don't like. Okay, 12 of them. Three things that you do and you're going to change him over here. Not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. You're going to be spinning your wheels. So communicate those things of what you want and what you need, but make sure they're, they're reality to you. Can this really happen? Are you willing to give what you're asking for? Right? I, I, you know, I'm hard on the sisters because we be tripping. We be tripping. You want somebody to make so much money to look like this, do this, but what you work with? Now, if that's your kid, that's what you should be asking for, what you are. Like my mother told me, you find somebody to give you what I can give you and more, he need to leave you here. Because I'm already doing it. You gonna go and not be broke. You gonna go and have somebody who can't motivate you to push you to be better. So you want to make sure that of what you're asking and looking for, you can do yourself. You know, us women, we lose ourselves so much. I can raise my hand. You're not telling yourself what tell on me. I did it. Chasing this one. When I say chasing, meaning I'm so busy now into him and into us, for, for a moment I lost me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it took some healthy people around me to pull my coattail. And then God, like, every time I keep tripping, what's wrong? Lost my license. Slam my hand, girl. He like, because I'm trying to slow you down. Mm -hmm. You done lost your way, baby. Get back on the reservation. Mm -hmm. You done lost your way. So what I would tell, and I tell this when I'm mentoring the young girls, get to know you first. Love you. Learn how to be with you by yourself. So if something happened with any man, you can live with you, right? Because relationships is a distraction. Finish school. Go back to your to-do list. Go back to the things that you put on your vision board. That's the latest thing in the last 10 years, right? Go back to your vision board. Go back to your to-do list. What's your dreams and aspirations? Support, learn to support your mate and still stay on top of you. Now in a relationship, there might have to be a sacrifice. You to take off school for a while because you're working to help build the business that he has or vice versa. All that's fine, 
but stay on top of what you want to do for you. Support that man. And that's where part of why she probably asked me to speak on this, because those of you that know or don't know, I'm going to make sure you know as I wrap up. My husband is an international spoken word artist, yes. Black Ice. Yes. But I didn't say he was in jail, and I'm trying to go say it, okay? I say he's an international spoken word artist. He's an author, um, mentor, motivator, producer, community activist. Um, and, you know, when I met him, he was already doing a lot of those things, but I met him in trauma. He had just lost his 15-year-old son to cancer. And he had just got custody of his son. And so he was broken and hurt. And with all of the gifts and talents that he had, I realized, okay, so you're running, you, you want to do, you're trying to find answers. You want pretty much, if you can save somebody else's son because you couldn't save yours. Let me now take my skills and gifts and figure out how we can bring this thing together to help build you up and support you. So when people see us and they see us doing our shows and our events, they're like, man, you support the heck out of him. You give a cold intro, you got his back, you got you passing out flyers, you selling tickets. Y'all might come to a show, I'm slinging chairs and tables because that's what I saw my mother do. But I chose, the person I chose to do that with is someone who I knew would do it for himself as well as me. So when we're choosing our mates when it comes to these healthy relationships, sometimes we're expecting something back that somebody don't have to give. It's not in them, it's not who they are. So be careful with that, with the healthy relationship. It should be, oh, he a man, he's supposed to do it. The dumbest comment or statement that we can make. Well, you a woman, so because you a woman, should you do all the cooking and cleaning? And what your parents did may not work for you and your new what your parents did in that era is gone. Two people, people are working. Two jobs, business, a hustle, school. Maybe your mother didn't work. So maybe you might have to help work that business with your husband while he go to work and go to another speaking engagement. Healthy relationships. It starts with you. I'm going to wrap it up. It starts with your communication skills. It starts with your boundaries. Being clear. And then reevaluate what you need and what you got with that mate may not be what you need now. Especially if you're raising children. You know, once the kids is gone, you're like, who are you? We've been so busy going to football or softball and the kids, we I don't even know you anymore. I just know us and how we're trying to raise the children. I told you I've been with UPS 24 years. One of my friends, when it was time for his children to go away to college, they was back to back. He was like, too late. Honestly, I don't know if we're gonna sustain this marriage. Because everything has been about the children. We've lost what we had. So I would say come back to the table often with your mate and say, hey, how we doing? You know, let's give me a report card. You know, how am I doing with your needs and your wants? Because let me tell you about my needs and my wants. Um, another thing is get a safe word, you know. You all in an altercation, you know, you're going back and forth and the communication is starting to get a little out of control. It's okay to pause that thing. Let's come back to this. This is becoming unhealthy. You yelling or cursing or whatever that is, have enough respect and value for yourself to create those rules so you can have healthy conversations. Everything don't have to be an argument. Everything isn't a fight. And as my mother told me, you gonna learn it's not worth it. Pick your battles. You gonna be fighting over here about this, when you got all that's going on, it's not worth it. And that comes with maturity and wisdom, but pick your battles. Communicate, be honest. Be honest, write it out, figure out a better way. Write that play through your head before you had a conversation with your mate. And then the last thing for healthy relationships, keep folks out your business. <laughs> Even in just general talking, as my mama say, shut up, you talk too much. You run off at the mouth. You don't think you tell him, right? But you tell him some things that people can use against you, throwing your face, and from a spiritual standpoint, those are spirits. Don't allow certain spirits in your house. Everybody not welcome in your home where you lay. That's your safe place. You can't control your peace anywhere else. You control your peace in your home. So that means some people can't come to your home. I grew up in a house, Gwendolyn didn't play. I'm baby, you're not welcome here, honey. I don't need your little spirit in my house. 
you're not welcome. I don't care if it was my, my daddy's sister, if it was one of my brother's wives. If she felt like that spirit changed the trajectory of what was going on in her house, you couldn't come. And I understand that now. You gotta protect your peace at all costs. So what we listen to, who we around, who we're talking to, what we're taking in, music is a spirit, all that bull crap on yeah. social media. You weren't even thinking that until you read this dumb meme that somebody made up and now it's your latest saying. I asked my daughter the other day, what that mean? Where that come from? Be careful. The what, what that mean? I I understood the assignment. I gave it where it come from. Be careful about what you repeat. What community did that come from? What did it stem from? So be careful what you latch on to and exchanging those spirits with your mate. All right. So again, 15 minutes for a healthy relationship. I just want to drop a few nuggets. You may have to relearn what you learned and what you thought was wrong. Do what works for you and your man. You may make the most money as a female, as a, as a wife. Don't let nobody get you caught up in, oh, he should be paying all the bills. He might be real good at a whole bunch of other stuff to take off of your plate. He do the kids, he take care of the cars, he make sure the house is taken care of, he sit down, make sure everything else is done. His what your money and his money together, don't let nobody tell you what your husband and you should be paying. Because they don't know what you all have going on. Last piece of my mother, she said, your daddy don't bring home a lot of money because I put it away. At that time, it was, a lot of, it was a lot of thrift plans and before the 401ks. So she maxed out all of the saving plans for my dad with his check. And so his check was smaller than he brought home. So she paid the bills with hers. And when my daddy had his accident at 48 years old, left the dead on the Dan Ryan Expressway and was left with short-term memory loss, never able to work again, take care of himself. We didn't miss a beat. But the woman I told you about to change hats, she had saved and put away. Yes, yes, and was yes. a good steward over their money and paid her bills. And was very diligent and strategic. So don't let nobody tell you about how it's supposed to go in your home with your mate. Do what works best for you and your mate. Not your girlfriend, because it sound good. He pay all her bills. She got this purse, he do this, yeah. What else is going on? As my mama said, you don't know what they did to have that situation. So do what's best for you and your mate. Love up on your mate. Communicate, create boundaries, but first make sure you're a healthy one first before you enter another relationship or enter a relationship. And if you got it wrong the first time, work on it before you jump into another one, it's okay, all right? So I'm sure that's my time. Kathy, thank you so much. Give me your um, information, your website, your all your other stuff. So um, thank you, husband. Um, he supports me harder than he pushes me, and he pushes me. You, can't, you got your cards? So I think I spoke to most of you. Um, as she said, I do have a six-week boot camp here, right here in Dalton Park District. Um, every Saturday, we have three more Saturdays. It's all inclusive. So for people who never worked out, to those that work out three to four days a week, um, I can show you modified. My motto is move a little, move a lot, as long as you move. Um, I have experienced being overweight for years. I've experienced um, that depression that comes with that. I've experienced that not being able to fit the clothes. You go, I like my size. I, I'm fat. You blind. You can't even breathe when you get up the stairs, and you mad every time you try on some clothes, but that make you feel good. So I want to help our black women with that and our babies. So you mentioned senior citizens. They wanted me to do a class. I couldn't commit because of the new position, but we'll be rolling out the senior citizens class, the seniors class, in the fall. So that is what's going on here at Dalton. Um, on Saturdays, you can contact me. Um, you can check out the website. It's black with a Q. B-L-A-Q, blackgirlmagic.com. Um, and that's just a little bit. We do mentorship, and as she said, community activists. And I have a mentorship program. We go into the detention centers. We go to the grammar schools. So that's a whole other segment. But especially those of you that live out here, Dalton Park District, check me out so we can get healthy, give you a nice fit fam that can help you while you're crying and cussing and fussing, y'all laughing. They'll help you go through it together, all right? Thank you so much for the opportunity, Kathy. Thank you very much. I know y'all know, I know y'all can do that.